Hi, and welcome to Accounting Academy. I'm Fitz, and this is my dog, Fifo. We love to help people learn more about accounting. So join us on our adventures as we dive into accounting topics. On today's adventure, we are going to be helping our friend, Pat. He owns an airline company called Paw Force One, flying the rich and famous pets around the globe. He has a question on held for sale as part of his future divestiture. So let's go. Hey, Pat, how goes it? Hey, Fitz. It's a perfect day for some accounting questions. Well, hello to you too, FIFO. So what can we help you with? All right, business is slow in our Midwest region. It isn't worth the investment, and we are selling that division to a local airline. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's a change for sure. What is complicated is that we're doing this at a loss compared to our accounting carrying value. We're doing this to preserve cash flows for our more profitable lines of business. Great, so what is your question? Can you help with the accounting for this deal? Like if we qualify for held for sale and discontinued operations? Sure. Let's start with the basics of how a sale qualifies for held for sale. Great. Yeah, let's start there. According to ASC 205-2045-1E, a component of an entity qualifies for held for sale if all of these criteria are met. First, management has the authority to approve the sale. Second, the entity is immediately available for sale. Third, there's an active plan to find a buyer. Fourth, the sale of the entity is probable within one year. Fifth, the entity is being marketed for sale. And last, actions required to complete the plan to sell is unlikely to significantly change. Well, as the sole owner of the company, I definitely have authority to do this sale, and we've already found a buyer. Oh, great. Yeah, the deal is set to close in six months with no significant changes planned. So I think we qualify to meet the designation as held for sale. Agreed. So do we qualify for discontinued operations as well? Typically, no. The FASB issued ASU 2014-08, making it much harder to qualify for discontinued operations. Oh, so how do I check for sure? I would start by looking at ASC 205-2045-1A and 1B. Typically, it must be a component or a business and must represent a strategic shift that will have a major effect on an entity's operations. Okay, maybe we should start with what is a component and what is a business? How does the literature define those? Sure. So a component is defined as an entity comprising of operations and cash flows that can be clearly distinguished operationally and for its financial reporting purposes from the rest of the entity. A component of an entity may be a reportable segment or an operating segment, a reportable unit, a subsidiary, or an asset group. We can break out the financials by geographic segments, so I think we qualify as a component. Okay, and you definitely qualify as a business because you have inputs, i.e. the planes, processes, the flights that generate the revenue, and outputs, the customers being flown for revenue. Okay, so how do we determine if it is a strategic shift? This can be difficult and involves judgment. Some common ways to determine significance are to look at if the component is called out within your financial statements. Other ways are to look at what percentage of revenue, net income, total assets, or even spending that the entity makes up the overall business. Perhaps even looking at what owners or investors are interested in could help determine its significance. Well, we don't break out our report geographically, and it really doesn't account for more than 5% or so of the company in all those categories. Okay, so it sounds like it's not really going to qualify for discontinued operations. Yeah, not really a strategic shift for the whole business. Agreed. I think an easy way to think of this is you don't qualify for discontinued operations if you sell a plane or a group of planes. However, if you are going to completely get out of the plane travel or a significant enough segment of your business, it may qualify for discontinued operations. Okay, gotcha. So my next question is what should I do with our aviation business's goodwill? Okay, this can be tricky because it requires you to fair value the business for sale and the remaining business correlated to that goodwill we would look to ASC 350-2042 through 3. The goodwill associated with the business being sold should be allocated into the held for sale carrying value based on its relative fair value. Well, luckily we did this recently for our annual goodwill valuation. The total goodwill is a million and the rest of the company has a fair value of nine million. Now, can we use the sale price of a million as the fair value? Yeah, you can, as it represents the fair value. Since the business being sold is 10% of the overall business with Goodwill, you can take that 10% or 100K of Goodwill and allocate it to the carrying value of the company to be sold. Okay, gotcha. That's simple enough. Next, we are going to want to calculate the impairment for the change in value to the held for sale assets and liabilities, which should result in a gain or loss. Okay, well, I think we have a more complicated scenario because our impairment loss will exceed the carrying value of the non-financial assets. 
Okay, this isn't typical, but it was discussed at a 2018 AICPA conference during a speech by Adam Brown. He pointed to two viewpoints. One viewpoint is in ASC 360-103540 and the other at subsection 43. Oh, so there's two options. Yep. The first option is to not record an impairment beyond the carrying value of the long-lived assets with disclosure as to additional losses expected. The second option is to record the impairment to the disposal group and not the individual assets. Ah, interesting. I think the second one would make more sense to my readers as it shows the fair value of the assets and liabilities being held for sale. Yeah, either is okay, but I do like that option. So can you help me with how this would look in the financials? Sure. You would just group the assets and liabilities within the current section of the balance sheet under the title Assets Held for Sale and Liabilities Held for Sale. And you wouldn't net them? No, you shouldn't. Also, in your footnote, you should clearly show what is within those line items, including your impairment amount if you chose that second option. Okay, Fitz, I think I've got it. One last question. Sure, what is it? What happens over the next two quarters? Should we recognize changes in carrying value? Yep, each reporting period, you would recognize the changes in carrying value as a gain or loss and adjust the balance of those items within the accounts held for sale. Got it. Thanks so much, Fitz. And you too, FIFO. (laughs) You're welcome. Good luck with the business. Okay, sit back and enjoy the flight. The in-flight movie is Harry Potter by J.K. Growling. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you can, donate a Patreon. Anything you can give helps to keep the lights on and ensures we can continue to create content. And of course, helps feed FIFO. If you want to contact us about anything you saw in this video, accounting advice, or ideas for future videos, contact us at patreon.com slash accountingacademy. This video is designed to be illustrative and does not represent an official position. We make no representations, warranties, or guarantees and assume no responsibility for the application of this material. Please seek advice from a competent professional if expert assistance is required.